My name is David, and this is Ianda Seabro Paracord Design. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make the Rattler Paracord Bracelet. What you'll need for this is two strands of cord. What I'm using here is red and firebolt. I also have two buckles, 5 8 inches. And the wrist size is going to be eight and a three quarter inches. All right, let's get into this tutorial. First, what you want to do is start from the bottom. You want to start at the bottom first. You're going to take both your cords. You're going to even up the ends, and you're going to loop off and tie to the side. Like this. You want to start by taking one end down through the, to the bottom of the buckle. On this, I'm using my colored cord to represent the, the red on like this, and the red cord will be where the black is on here. First, you want to take the top side of the cord and take it straight up to the top for the time being. Then you want to take your uh, bottom cord and loop it over the top, pulling out any slack. In the loop, you want to close that off, making sure it stays even. There is a little bit of slack on this, uh, like amount of cord I'm using. So best guess, you can do at whatever size you want, above, I believe, nine feet of cord. I always use more than is necessary. And then you take it, you're going to take both cords up to the top, like so. And I'm going to stop there for now, and I'm going to run the other cord through. You're going to repeat the same process for the other side. You're going to bring one of the cords down through the bottom. And you want to make sure both your ends are even. Like I have them here. For this one, I'm just going to do it a little different. All right. Next, you're going to bring the other two cords up through the top as well. All right. There goes that. Next, what you want to do, you want to start from the left cord. You're going to take this one, the left side, this cord here, and you're going to loop that over that same cord. And you're going to loop it out to the left. And then tighten that up. And that one's going to be your pass-through pattern for the entire design. Next, you want to take your second cord 
and you're going to bring it up between chords one and two, but you're going to loop over chord two and come back up right here. Like this. And then loop under and then right back up. You're going to do this for the rest of the, uh, the chords as well. And making sure that you're nice and tight because you do want a good amount of tightness to this. And then repeat the others. You always come up on the left, over to the right, and back up to the left again. Just like that as well. You'll basically have your three chords in between your four and one to the side. All right. Now, first, what you want to do, you're going to take the chord that's always this one here, and you're going to take that under, over, under, and over like this. You're going to go under chords one and three and above chords two and four. This will be the guiding line for the pattern. Next, what you're gonna do, you're gonna take your first chord, you're gonna bring it down in between chords one and two, like this. And then you're going to bring it up to the left side of the chord that you just brought down. So you're going to bring it to this side here, but you're going to stay inside that cavity right there. You're going to come up behind the, uh, the starting strand, and you're going to bring that chord right back up. Next, you're going to take the rest of the chord, and you're going to loop it twice over this chord here. That's once, and there's your second time. And then you're gonna tighten up your cords. You're gonna tighten up the cord. You may need a pair of pliers or something to tighten it up. You're going to come out like that pattern design right there. And then next, what you're going to do, you're going to take the cord. You're going to go over to the left of cord one. And you're going to come right back up like this. That'll be the first one tied off. You're going to repeat the process for the rest. You're going to repeat the process for the second and the third chords. They're all going to go right here, one by one, next to each other. You're going to repeat the process again. You're going to go past the starting strand, and then you're going to go down and back up behind it. And then you're going to loop twice over the same chord that went down.
And then you have your second one, and you're going to repeat the process. You're going to loop over the first chord and come back up to the left of the chord that you just uh, weaved. You're going to have three in a line right here, one here, one here, and the last one's going to do the same thing. They're all going to diagonal towards the left chord. You're going to do the third one and repeat the process. As you can see here, you got three in a line, and then the three going diagonal. And finish this one off. As you can see right here, you loop over, and you come under, in between chords one and two, and you, tight, and you tighten that off. As you can see, I have the first, the second, and the third chords. And then next, what you want to do, you're going to tie this one off here. Uh, simply just by going under between chords three and four. You're going to tie that off by looping it and putting a knot. And you're going to follow that throughout the pattern. As you can see here, you loop over, under, in between chords three and four, and then you tighten that up. That'll hold that section of the weave in place, and it's, I think that works out pretty well. It adds a little uh, added feature to the design. Next, you're going to do the same thing, under, over, under, over, in the pattern with the chord on the right. Chord number one will always do this, and two, three, and four will follow the weaving pattern. Same thing. Next, what you're going to do, you're going to take the red chord all the way over to the right. And repeat the process. You're going to stay on the left side of the chord once you come up through underneath. You're going to go down and you're going to come out like that but you can only make sure no actually you come down in between chords three and four and up to the right of the chord and then you're going to loop twice over and go to the right. Apologize for the for that. Continue following, and you're going to repeat the process for the other two. And the same thing, repeat the same process. You're going to loop over. And then you're going to do the second and the third chords. You're going to repeat that. And you're always going to be on the extreme left or the extreme right of the inside of the weaving pattern for the red or whatever chord color you're using. For that color, that's going to zigzag back and forth through the pattern, always on a diagonal. The second and the third will go to the middle and the left, in between chords one and two and two and three. 
you're always changing to the opposite direction as the starting chord when you bring the chords out this like this one here the first one will come to the right when you start out you go to the left the right and then left right left right all the way through the pattern in retrospect when you start out you have one set two three four five six seven eight in the weaving pattern so you're going to do this eight times On the first set, you loop from left going right and then coming out to the left. And then the second pattern, it flips in the opposite direction. And then on to the last one. Now, see, as you have three, you're going to do the same thing here. You're going to loop over and come up in between chords one and two. And then loop over the top of that chord at the top right there and come right back out here. Kind of like that. Loop over to the left and come up in between chords one and two, and then you take your chord right back up through here, and then you tighten that up. And then repeat the process. So I'm gonna do this the rest of the way through. So bear with me, this might be a little bit long of a video. And like I said, the, the, number, the second chord, number two chord, will always be going from extreme left to extreme right. And then since these chords came to the right, now when you do to the next side, you bring the chords to the left. So do this correctly and you're all set. You want to make sure that you always loop the opposite direction of the chords. So when you come up behind here, you'll be coming up to the left of this chord and then looping to the left again. As you can see here, you loop to the left of the chord, and then loop once, loop twice, and to the left. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
You could use FIDs for this if you want. I just prefer to do it by freehand. And then repeat the process again. Loop over the first chord and behind the chord once you come up. And then move on to the next. Leave a little slack so that you can pass your cord through. Or if you have a pair of feds, you could use that too. And then repeat the process one last time. And that's basically how this pattern goes. I'm going to continue on and do this all the rest of the way.
and then same repeat the process again. One, two, three, four, five. Now three left to go. I was originally intending on doing this with hex knots, but I decided against it as it doesn't look too good with the pattern.
And here's where we start the last run on the pattern. This is going to be a fairly simple finishing. To finish this off you're gonna just do the same thing that you do right here you know loop over under uh, in between cord one and two and tie off you can pick your way of going about it you can go like this no that's not right let me finish with the last two and then I'll show you how to finish it off
Okay. Huh. Okay. Hold off on that one. No, yeah, that's right. Yeah, now I figured it out. What you want to do is when you do your last stretch right here, you're going to do the same thing, normal pattern. You're going to come over chord one and come back up in between chord one and two behind the line. And then you want to loop back into the loop off to the side. Then you want to tighten that up as much as possible. Hold it tight from underneath and tighten it up. And you're going to cut and singe right there. You're going to do the same thing for the other two. You're going to come over, chord one. You're going to come up behind the chord, like so. And then you're going to take that and you're going to loop it right through the, the loop. And then tighten it up as best as you could. And then do the third one and then repeat the process. For the last step on this red cord right here, you're going to double loop and basically close it off. this that finishes off the three chords to the one side as you can see here you got your three chords off to one side and then your one chord here you're going to take that you're going to loop over once and twice and then tighten it up. And there you go. Basically, next thing you need to do is cut and singe. There you have it. That is the Rattler paracord bracelet. Let me go ahead and unsnap this from the buckle. You want to cut at least a little bit back, not too much. Unfortunately, I don't have my... Oh, wait, I might. Next, you want to take your torch and cut and singe and mushroom the head over. You want to use that as much as a mushroom as possible. You want to flatten down and then rub it. 
and then do the same thing for the three on this side one by one Like I said, you want to flatten it and round it off over the top so that it uses it as leverage. And then the next two. Latin and then rub over the top. You want to put as much of a mushroom head on top of those knots, that way it holds nice and tight. And there you go. That is the Rattler Paracord Bracelet. And here's what the back side looks like. It's an absolute mess. And there you have it. This one gives me a nice little bit of extra as I did make this one here a little bit smaller. That's why it came out uh, opposite. Three chords ended on the right here and the starting strand on the left. This one ended up the opposite direction, apparently. All right. Thank you. My name is David. This is Ianda Seabro Paracord Design. Have a nice day.